All right, so hopefully you take some time to uh, do this profile and uh, set up what is necessary for you, uh, if it's necessary for you, here. There's a variety of certificates and all of that that you can add. Um, let's look at, let's jump over now to see, okay, what are we in store for if we actually want to use LinkedIn more as a business or for a company? So wherever you're at here, you should have that interests link at the top, and the very first interest is companies. Let's go explore that for a moment. Interests, and then click on companies. So the thing about this screen is where you can get the latest news and job opportunities. That is, you can follow companies. So every time they post something new, you will see their updates on your home screen and, and here also, but it's consolidated specifically here. And also, this is the screen where we're going to create a company. So it says raise brand awareness, announce career opportunities, and promote your products and services with a LinkedIn company page. And at some point, if you'd like, you, you don't have to do it now, but if you go over to learn more at some point, they'll, they'll give you a big spiel about what, what it is about and how to do it and all the details. You can look at that later. But what I want to do here under create a company page is let's check this out. Let's click create. Click create the company page there. So this offers public information about each company on LinkedIn. To add a company page, enter this info. Only current employees are eligible to create a company page. So that's really not a big deal for most people. It's my business. I want to create it now. So I will set to create it now. What's the company name? So let's say I'm trying to create a company that already exists. It may or may not let you. Most likely, we're doing this for a company that doesn't exist yet on LinkedIn. You know, your own personal page and so forth. So here's where I would create Victor's Bakery Company. And then the email address. Now, this is the part where you might get stuck at the moment because this, to vouch for this, it needs some sort of email of that company. And here's what I'm saying. Like, let's say I'm trying to fill in victorsbakery at gmail.com. Gmail.com. That may or may not work because Gmail, anyone can create a Gmail address. Any spammer can create a Gmail address and therefore use it to create a fake profile here on LinkedIn. What it really wants is something more like let's say support at victorsbakery.com the operating word is this not gmail not yahoo not hotmail not any of these free services that anyone can create a free email address at it wants really a legitimate domain name of a legitimate website now this I cannot tell you how to do this. You have to go to Bluehost or GoDaddy or HostMonster or whatever of these companies out there where you purchase a domain name, where you purchase your little piece of the internet, victorsbakery.com, uh, victorsrealty.net, whatever. And that's not a discussion we have time to get into, but if you just want some quick names, godaddy.com is one of them. Bluehost.com is another. Hostmonster.com is another. And there's plenty more, dozens, hundreds of more to talk about. I mentioned these three because these are the ones that I've personally dealt with, and they're pretty good. Question? Can you create your blog or your website like on Wix.com, that domain that you buy? Is that, can you use that in there? Probably. You have to check with Wix that they also provide you some way to make an email. So if you have uh, if you have, you know, blog at yourwebsite.com from Wix, that should work. So you have to check with Wix. I don't, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but they probably do offer that service. Yes? If I'm just a small company, I don't have that. Therefore, I can't create a company. 
I'm going to try it just to answer that question. I will, I will make up you know, a Gmail address here just to see what happens. I will try it with Gmail. I'll, I'll see what happens. So here it's saying, I verify I am the official representative. So yes. So I'll continue that. Let's just see what happens. Before we go on, I'll, I'll click continue. Sorry, Gmail is not valid for a company domain. Okay, let me see. I will make one on Yahoo. Let's do Yahoo. Get the same thing. So these company, these these providers out here that give you a free address, they have the notoriety that any spammer can make an account. So therefore, LinkedIn seems to be stopping me at this point. Now I believe I can do it like this. My Yahoo.com. Continue. We're sorry that a new company cannot be created at this time. Hmm. It might, it might be trying it might be seeing that I'm trying to do this to fake but my point here is that I'm trying to create an, a, a company page with a real address let's say I'll try it like this support at um, themesinc.net uh, com yeah for some reason it's not letting me hear uh, it could be because I've tried to put too many fake addresses and it's saying, hey, wait a minute. So I might try later. It might also be that a lot of us are trying to do it at once right here. And this happens sometimes in my classes when all of us are doing the exact same thing. Sometimes these networks get weird and they say, why are there 30 people doing the same thing in the same room at the same <laughs> moment? This must be a spam farm. So it's not quite letting me do it at the moment. If it let you do it, great. If it, if it didn't... We'll just have to try it again later. But this is the screen. And, and over on your company screen is basically what you're going to see anyway, on, like on your personal profile. On your personal profile is the ability for us to add the projects and the, you know, the credentials and all of that. We can do that also on companies. So even if I can't show you exactly right now, what we've done with personal is still applicable to companies. So did anyone get it to work? Did anyone get these errors like I did too? If you didn't try it, that's okay. You, again, you, you may decide to use LinkedIn either or, or both, and it, it's fine. Just to show you here, uh, let me do something here quickly. Just uh, follow along for a quick moment. I'm going to log in with my real login info for my real company just to show you what it would look like if you did have that access. Just to show you, it's not really a lot of difference. But I have my real account, it is fully set up. I can go over to my interests on the companies. These are the companies I'm following. These are the companies that I manage. So after you do manage to, to set it up, now your screen here will say manage it manage your pages. These are the pages that I uh, that I have access to to make changes to, to update and so forth. And I can do that with more than one company. Because me, as I said, I teach this but I also do it in for my business. And in my business we run LinkedIn for companies. We run Twitter for companies because we're able to become managers on LinkedIn, on, on Pinterest, on, on Twitter, etc. So on this particular company, I can go in here, and it's very, very, very similar to everything else that we see on regular old LinkedIn. I can share an update, and we'll go to that. We'll do that detail in just a bit. I can share updates. I can do the branding. Uh, I can make connections. I can share stuff. I can edit it so that people find it. I can add a job posting to it sponsor my updates, you know, paying for more visibility and such. Showcase page, that's a little different. You know, the showcase pages make a really nice design, extend my presence, make it more um, more interesting for people to look at and to follow. So that's one big reason to, to work with company pages. It's got a few different things from the business from the personal. Not so different that it's completely alien. What the company page also has is a screen of analytics 
which will show you. You know, I posted something, this is how many hits it got, what was the audience, all of that. You don't get that from, from personal. From the business one, the point of this is to see, I'm going to share something once a week on LinkedIn, different articles, different links, pictures, PowerPoints, whatever. I'm going to share different things, and when I look at my uh, analytics here, this will tell me this one worked better than that one. This one didn't do so well. This post didn't do so well. This is to guide me to try to find my audience. This one didn't resonate with an audience, but this other post did, so I'll do more like that one. All of the networks have some way of checking your statistics, your analytics. We saw that with Twitter, we saw that with Facebook, we saw it with Pinterest, and so forth. LinkedIn has it too, if you've got a business page. Notifications, just like everything else, but more detail. This week I got this number of likes, this month I got this number of shares, and so it's not that different from a personal one, is it? It's just that now I'm thinking in terms of sharing content as a business. San Diego Community College District, share this. Stop by the Second Chance Community Job Fair from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Jacob Center. Dozens of employers providing employment and housing info. Pick up a free short-term Stop by our table to pick up information on free short-term training. This was shared three days ago. It had 13 likes, one comment. So this, so the college is sharing this for free, but ultimately they're still wanting to guide you to take classes. These classes are are state funded so the more students we have the more funding we get the more classes we can offer the more people we educate the better community we have this company brand graphic shared a marketing tip setting your video to autoplay actually causes many users to leave your site entirely rather than simply stopping the video turn off autoplay and you'll find you have a much more engaged audience so here this marketing company is sharing a free marketing tip with a click, with a link to go to click and go back to find more info. So again, what am I going to share on LinkedIn? Whatever makes sense for your audience, whatever makes sense for your product or your brand or your nonprofit organization. That's why it's still valuable, like we talked last month. Your company should also follow other companies to see what they're posting, how they're posting. Um, be careful, of course, because that company will see that it says Victor's Bakery followed you. Hey, Victor's Bakery is my rival. I want to block them. So, following other companies is valuable, but you never know if it'll not be appreciated. And you don't have to follow your rivals. You can follow related companies. I could follow Victor's Bakery. I'm not going to follow the local bakeries in San Diego. I'm going to follow bakeries in Chicago. I'm going to follow bakeries in New York. They're still bakeries. It's still valuable to see how they're doing it, but I'm not going to follow my rivals because it com might come back to bite me. We'll see how to do that in a moment. <clears throat> but that's the, big, that's the big thing about having a company. It's not a huge, huge secret. I'm still going to go back to the personal one and talk about that, and what we're talking about personal applies to the company but on the business itself, and then you edit the business, you will see the option to add the address somewhere. So when you edit your company listing, you'll be able to write about it, what kind of company, website, all of that, admins, add more people to help you manage the business. You want to then no longer want it on LinkedIn? There's a remove button there. You can have sponsors, images, logos, specialties. We'll talk about groups in a moment. So again, I can't exactly show you how to work with the company if we can't create it, but that's okay. 
because again, I'm recording this, you can come back and play it, and whatever we're learning for our personal applies to business. So I'm going to move on from here. But any questions about the business, the company aspect on LinkedIn? We can come back to it a little later too, but um, this is the company. Yes? Can you, uh, what was the last thing you said? You know, on your site, uh, on a LinkedIn profile, some companies or they add their own things in. Yes, um, over on my own personal, I can add my company, I can attach my company to it. I have to have the company first, I have to set up the company, and then I can add it under Edit Profile. Oh, okay, I see. Other companies are visiting my profile, and you don't want other companies to see my profile. Is that Yeah, we're going to talk about following and such very soon, uh, because when I see on my account and I see their stuff here, and I don't want to see their stuff, I have to unfollow. We have to talk about following and unfollowing yet. We're going to do that very soon. So I'm going to go back to this one that we created together. <clears throat> We're going to talk about following and such in just a moment. Uh, but before that, remember when we talked about Twitter and uh, Pinterest and such, I talked about that we want to get followers because that's an audience. And when I share something, that audience will see it. But I'm not going to entice followers if I have nothing to show for it. If I don't have posts, if I don't have my profile set up, why would someone follow an incomplete account? I log in and I get all of these notifications of more people wanting to connect with me. I've got 10 to deal with right there. I'm probably not going to accept 99% of them because, again, use LinkedIn selfishly. I have all of these people that want to connect with me, but I'm going to look. What are they about? Is their profile complete? What do they do? And then I'm going to decide to follow or not. And usually, honestly, I don't follow students because I don't want a conflict of interest during the class. If you're in my class and we're a student, and this works more like when I'm teaching a class where you're, there's actually grades and such. I don't follow students because, hey, why did you give me a B on that if we're buddies on LinkedIn? So I don't follow people in class usually. So don't take it bad if I never follow you back or connect with you. It's just that, again, I'm using these networks selfishly. What's in it for me if I follow you? You're this PhD in astrophysics, okay, it might be valuable for me to contact and connect with you. But if you're not, then I might not. Don't take it bad. So that's how I might, part of my criteria of how do I follow people, how do I connect with people, what's in it for me, what are they sharing, is their profile complete? The content, again, it's all about content, it goes back to content, not any tricks, it's about content. What is the content that is being published at this account? that entices me to follow. At the moment, there's very little to entice people to follow John Smith. No picture, no biography, no nothing really in the resume, and no posts, no updates. Let's take a moment to talk about updates then. Because I would recommend fill your profile as much as possible and share some updates to no one. You have no connections and that's okay. Share three to five posts, three to five updates, to have something to show for it when people actually want to follow you. Let's go back to the home screen. Wherever you're at, let's go back to home. And we have share an update, upload a photo. Let's start with share an update. This is what's on your mind. You can still attach a photo to that. Notice there's a little icon there in the corner. Even if I'm doing a, an update which seems like it's just text, you can still attach a photo. What's on your mind? You're going to use LinkedIn again and all of these networks in a way to reach an audience, to convince an audience. You're going to think like a marketer, like an advertiser. 
Because if you don't know by now, the whole purpose of all advertising is to make you feel bad. You're hungry by this. You smell by that. You have no friends by this. All advertising, unfortunately, is to make you feel bad, and they've got the solution. That hair care product, that summer vacation, that uh, website, you know, everything about marketing, if you really boil it down cynically, is about making you feel something, but we've got the solution to fix that. So to some degree, you're going to need to think like that when you share content, when you advertise, when you market. What do you have that someone needs? Let's say it nicer like that. What do you have that someone needs? Rather than the other way about making them feel bad. I have all of these properties I'm trying to sell. So that means I need to find people to buy those properties. So I'm going to be sharing one possible way. Let's say I'm the realtor. And I'm going to share here. Just listed. Uh, five bedroom... La Jolla property, $250,000, or best offer. So, okay. <laughs> there we go. I'm enticing everyone. I'm enticing everyone. So I'm sharing something, updates related to my business, in a way to entice people uh, actually, there were there was a there was a zero missing here. There was a zero missing, or a comma. Um, even that's a good price. <laughs> so um, something to entice people. Plain old text on its own probably is not going to really cut it. I still am going to attach a picture because if you notice on what the suggestions of what's being shared to me, there's some kind of text, some kind of picture. So it's not really just the text you're going to share. You do have the ability to write a whole paragraph here. I don't recommend you write a whole paragraph. You write a sentence or two that entices people, add a picture. So you don't have to do this, but it's simple. I, attach, I click the picture, and then I go browse for pictures, and I attach a picture, and it's got a picture. There's a picture attached to my text there. Great. That's nothing special. You attach a photo. what you write here again I can't tell you exactly what to write it's your business you know your business you know what you have to do if you take the SEO class however we do take a day where we talk about a marketing strategy because all of the social media you should have some kind of marketing strategy in mind at least one piece of paper with notes about this is what I'm going to be doing on social media I'm gonna try to always share something about this and something about that marketing strategy in the class, if you take it, we go into more detail, where you do take a step back and analyze your business and think about the big topics of your business, and that's what's going to guide you when you share. Coca-Cola is sharing all of these great photos in purposes of selling that product. Coca-Cola is a big company that owns Coca-Cola and Powerade and, like, you know, Honest Tea or whatever. All of these, they sell all of these things, not just the classic sugar water. They share it in many different, I mean, they sell it in many different permeations, permutations. The, the energy version of it, the organic version of it, the, you know, the, the energy drink version. But they have a marketing plan of what to share on LinkedIn, what to share on Twitter. And it may be the same, it may be different, but they have a plan. So to help build that plan, see what the competition is sharing. Maybe I don't have an idea what to share yet. I can get inspiration by searching. We'll do that in a moment. But I want to show you here good practices. Don't write a whole paragraph here. Write something, one or two sentences to entice, plus a link. Because that link is going to take them back to my Realty website. And at my Realty website is where I've got the phone number, or maybe like a quick um, application. You know, sometimes realtors have these applications on their site to get the ball rolling faster, or a phone number. You know, I could have that here that enticement and then I say uh, you know call today and I will put my my phone number sure I can do that too don't let it be a dead end don't just say here it is have still some sort of call to action some sort of follow-up call me 
click here for more info. Um, send us an email, some sort of call to action. Oftentimes with a picture. Let's say I have on my website let's say I have on my website some sort of article this article I want to share this article all of the I'm not going to write all of this on LinkedIn let's say I'm going to share this article from my blog from my website on LinkedIn you can if your website doesn't automatically have some sort of sharing button, like right here, share to LinkedIn, if your website doesn't have that, I would research how do I add the sharing buttons to my website. Because in this way, I can quickly share my post to my LinkedIn. Or someone that visits my site found this great article and they want to share it to their LinkedIn. So you have to look up on your site, how do I add the sharing buttons? If you're using something modern, like Squarespace and Wix and WordPress, there just should be probably a button that you turn it on and it works. If you don't find that feature, look it up in your in your provider about how to how to do that. If you don't have that, you're not you're not it's not game over because you can still copy the address. This is this article. Let's say I don't have the links, the share links. I just copy my address I go back to LinkedIn and I paste the address and it's smart enough that it analyzes the link, makes a little preview of the picture there, and writes in a little text for you, which you can change. Notice I can click here to, if I had more pictures on that page, I could choose more from there or remove it or add my own. And this text here, I can go back in and change it. Maybe the, maybe the snippet that it grabbed for me didn't quite make the cut, like right here. You can actually create one set of code and then use it to cut off. So I can go in and finish that. You can actually create one set of code and then use it, use it on multiple platforms. So now I've got this link attached with still some space to explain the link. One odd thing here, I, I hope they fix this. I pasted the link and it made the cool preview. This is going to be an active link once I share it. I can delete this now if I, if I don't want that in the way. It still took my link and the preview and it's an active clickable thing. And I can leave that link still there, although now whatever I type here, the link is there twice. That's not good or bad or anything. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can remove the link there because that's the link. Or you can leave it twice there because sometimes people might not think to click here and instead will click here. Let's say I'm going to leave it. I'm going to further write, let's say this is my web design company. So I'll write something like, have you read our latest article on how to quickly and easily build an app? So my ultimate goal here is for people to go to my website, read that article, and get educated, but my ultimate, ultimate goal is for me to get hired to make an app for a company. Yes, you can start the process yourself here with the tutorial, but then people will see it's actually more complicated. Maybe I'll hire this company that seems to know what they're doing. So I'm going to write something to entice people to, to click that link, because most of these networks are still going to operate under the idea that you're still going to guide people back to your website, where I make the sale, where I give my phone number, where I have the form to fill out, or the, 
donate now button and such because I can't have donate now directly on LinkedIn. They still have to be transferred over to my, my site or my PayPal or my Etsy or something. Do each of the show page, the show page pages, do each of those have the opportunity to do outlets as well? Uh, I have to double check, but I believe so. The point of the showcase is to really show off your business and its content on LinkedIn. So I have to double check it, but I, I believe so. Uh, at the very least, the company itself has the ability to share any of this. So here then, I'm going to share this. Do I want it public? Just my connections? Or if I connect to Twitter, I will also share this automatically to Twitter. That's how I can manage more than one network. I want to share this to LinkedIn and Twitter. Twitter can share it over to LinkedIn can share it over to Twitter if I select share with Twitter. It'll ask you to sign in and all of that, then it'll connect. We've got public, let anyone on LinkedIn find this article or just my connections. That's sort of like setting it private. I don't recommend you use this one really because less people will be able to find your content. You may want to do that. I'm not saying never do it, but think about why you might want to choose that. Why would you make the content of your company private? Don't you want more customers? Don't you want more people to find it and hire you? You could have an exclusive company that you don't sell to everyone. You only sell to certain clientele. That's a possibility why I might want to select that one. Only the connections that I have can see this. So you can share if you want. I will click share, and then what happens is that got published, and all zero of my collect connection saw it. But again, you will do three or five posts to no one, so that when someone searches up here, a company or a title or a article, they see you or your company, they see they click on it and they see they've shared some good things I want to follow. That's the big secret to get followers. Share great stuff. Do it on a regular basis. You know, once a week is good, once a month is okay, once a day is even better. But if you created a LinkedIn and haven't used it in, in three months, six months, nine months, 24 months, if you haven't used this in a while, no wonder you're not getting any use out of it. You're not active. You need to be active on the, any of these networks. And the reason we're doing an overview of all of these networks is because, yes, it is burdensome. It is cumbersome. I've got to do this on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and Pinterest. Again, short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. But the overview of the class will hopefully guide you and say, I think I can manage LinkedIn pretty well. I'm going to focus my attention on LinkedIn. I claimed my name on Facebook, and I'm not active on Facebook, but I'm going to be active. I'm going to become a superstar on LinkedIn. Great. Go with what works. But you won't know what works until you try them all, and they're all free. Uploading a photo is very similar to, you select a photo, sharing it public or not, and you can go backwards, you can attach a link to this one. So I kind of, I think that's not, it's the same thing, I don't know why they really separate them, but if you select share and update, you can still attach a photo and a link, or if you go with photo, you can attach a photo and a link in text, so it's almost the same thing. It's almost like, well, what, what's the difference? But in any case here, it's about sharing content, either in, in my personal account or my business account. Any questions on this? Yes? Yeah, we talked about it last month. 
We talked about that those are valuable. Hootsuite is valuable and also Buffer.com. Those are the two I mentioned. So if you were not here last month, we mentioned uh, Hootsuite.com and Buffer.com. Both of these sites are for helping you manage all of these multiple networks. Instead of you remembering to log into your LinkedIn again and your Facebook again, you can use one of these, and there's many of them. You can log into one of these and link all your accounts together and just share your content on Buffer and it will automatically send it to all the networks. So that way you only have to manage one website and it'll share it to all your networks. They are valuable. Uh, as a beginner and as someone that has to run their business and keep track of everything, these are very valuable. It helps you uh, work less and do more. The downside, however, is that the same content will go to all the networks. And it is valuable to share different things to different networks. Yes, that is even more work, but it is more valuable to do that because every network has its own demographics and its own culture and its own you know, response and such. On Twitter, I have literally 140 characters. So that, that, you know, those two sentences that I wrote are going to get cut off on Twitter if I share through Buffer. The, uh, the, the Facebook algorithm changes all the time, and it, there's controversy sometimes from Facebook that it blocks auto-sharing like this because it goes against its terms of service. So there's still always issues. I don't know at the moment if everything is safe on Facebook, but it's free. Hootsuite and Buffer and such, they have free versions and paid versions. But this is a way for you to manage more than one quickly. I'm taking a quick look at Interests Pulse. And the purpose of this, one purpose of this, is to get inspiration about what, what's trending, what are people, what articles are being published. And I can check these articles. for me to get inspiration on what to write. Maybe my own take on critical things ridiculously successful people do every day. So my own version of motivational speaking about what you need to do to succeed. I read their article, I write my version, I share my version. Up on the top left corner, you can then specify, show me top posts, Show me posts about the economy, professional women, discover more technology, etc. Six favorite books about big ideas. So these are these are basically blog posts that are appearing under Pulse. Guess what? You can write your own blog posts too. There's regular old updates, which are usually a short snippet, and there's also blog posts where you can wax poetic, just like this, on and on and on. You can write blog posts now on LinkedIn too. You might not see it, on the top right corner, I'm in Pulse, and on the top right corner, I see Publish a Post. How many of you also see Publish Post? If you don't see it, most likely that's because you need to verify the account. Again, I'm playing with a test account, so I, 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 have, I can't verify it. On my real account, eventually, you know, I've verified my account, and I'm in Pulse, and eventually I have the ability to publish a blog post on LinkedIn. Like WordPress, like Blogger, like Squarespace, etc. You don't have it yet, again, don't worry. You don't have it until you verify your account. I can't verify this one because it's a fake email address. But eventually, when I do this for real, and I verify my account, I should see under Pulse, on the top right corner, uh, under the main, let's see, under Pulse top 
posts usually. On the top right corner, there will be publish. If I'm in a section of technology, for example, I might see follow this channel. You know, show me the latest about this channel. Let me go back. Pulse design. Yeah. So I have an account here where I where I have verified it, and if I look under the pulse, the different sections, I can follow a section, a, a channel, you know, f show me all the stuff about technology. And I can also publish an article about that. So if you publish the article, it appears in other people's pulse feeds? It'll appear within the section within your within your profile, but it'll also appear in the section of technology. The problem is that a lot of people are publishing content, so your stuff will get buried, like this one that stood it out here. It does here. appear there. It does appear here. Time to slow it down with 10 exclamation points. So someone wrote that. It does appear here, but it is going to get lost unless you keep up to date with it. But that's still search. Search is still up here. With what you've published will, will be found up there. So you could take what you've written on your regular blog, let's say on your website or on WordPress or blog or whatever, you could, you could take what you wrote there and republish it here, but if you do that I would recommend you change it up a bit. Maybe add more to it or shorten it down, add a different picture. The point of that is different content. What's to entice people to visit your website? if you're already publishing the same thing on LinkedIn. What's to entice people to go back to your website with, if there's nothing new? What's to entice people to follow you on Twitter if they're already following you on LinkedIn? Different content. Um, you know, either changed a little bit or changed a lot or completely different. <clears throat> and so under interests and pulse is the spot where you can also blog on LinkedIn. Let's say I'm searching for a company just for fun. Let's do this. At the very top, switch the search field to company and then search PMD Interactive. If you get a suggestion and it finds it, you can click it, but let's just search Company PMD Interactive and press Enter. So all the, all the stuff related to PMD Interactive shows up here. The people, the companies. If you don't take the suggestion it gave you, I'm just showing you, it shows you a lot of content. So. These are the people affiliated with PMD Interactive. And then on the left side under Companies, it'll show you the company. And the point of this is, under Companies, you'll see Follow. If you see My Company, you can follow if you'd like. It won't affect your grade, don't worry. Um, <laughs> You can follow, you can unfollow. The point of following a company is then you'll see the latest updates, the latest posts, and so forth. This is what I said earlier. It might be a good idea for you to follow competitors or follow those in your, in your niche so that you see what they're posting for you to get an idea of what you can post and post it better. And so following other companies for inspiration is highly valuable. We talked about that for the other networks too. Do it on Twitter, do it on Facebook, do it on Pinterest, Google Plus, follow other companies, get inspiration. Because social media will work the best when you use it on a regular basis. And people ask, what's a regular basis? The honest answer is every day. That's a lot of work. I don't do it every day honestly either, even for companies that hire us. Once a week is very good post something new every week. 
And yes, you can share the same thing on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. Maybe change it up a little bit. Same picture, but different text. Different, uh, same text, but different picture. But the more you use social media, the more you can be found. Why do, they, why do you think that those companies, you know, a local company creates a flyer, 10,000 flyers, and they put it on 10,000 cars? The more people it reaches out of those 10,000, maybe a hundred of them actually use the coupon and hire the person. They spent to buy 10,000 flyers and a hundred of them followed through, you know, that ratio is very low. A hundred out of 10,000 is a very low ratio, technically, but it's still a great result. A hundred sales out of my fifty dollars that I spent on printing 10,000 flyers. So the point here is publish something often. Once a week is good, once a month is okay, once a day is better, but some of these publish two things every day, five things every day, because they've got a stable of writers to help them write stuff. You don't need to go that far, but once a week is a very good, is a very good goal. Once a week, every Wednesday, I'm going to share something on, on Facebook. And then on Monday, I'm going to share the same thing, but on LinkedIn. And on Friday, I'm going to share the same thing, but on Twitter. So that's how you can manage that. Or use Buffer.com and have it automatically share for you on a schedule. I can go to Buffer and set it and set a whole month's worth of posts today and don't have to worry about it that I didn't do it next week. Buffer, you can schedule posts and it'll send them off to your networks how you, how you tell it. Any general questions at this point? Yes? Um, I guess I'm still kind of unclear as to the best practice for, um, like, if I already have a blog, and let's just say I wanted to make it my update, you know, my status on my profile page, mm -hmm. would I then still copy that into the post page, even though it's the same one? Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if on my profile, it's linking back to my website. So, that's kind of, I'm basically an overkill from that. Well, notice the way I'm doing it here. I did share one of my one of my posts. I wrote that post on my website, but I only shared a little snippet of it, a little enticement of it, not the whole thing. Yeah. So I did share the link to my article. If someone did, gets enticed, yes, I want to quickly create an ad. Well, they have to click the link to go read the whole thing back on the site. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be overkill. It's that's what everyone does. You need some form of little enticement to bring them back to your site. But then you still also post that in the Pulse section as well. Oh, if you go over to yeah. if you go over to Pulse. Um, this one is a little bit more of like temporary transitory content because you publish something and something's gonna push it down and something new is gonna keep taking its place. Mm -hmm. This is like for the short quick things. And over on Pulse on your blog post, that's something that kind of lives more, a little more evergreen. Okay. You can see that. You can return to that a lot easier because it's in that section. Whereas here, your new update is going to push the old one out and it's going to go out of people's minds faster. So it's okay to share them the both ways, but notice on this one is focused on a quick snippet. Go read the rest. Over on Pulse, it is the whole article there. The whole article. If it's valuable, yes. If uh, if writing the whole thing here is valuable, that might work. Mm -hmm. But still, I I sort of feel you still want to think about leading them back to your website mm -hmm. because this is a great article. But perhaps in this, they're not selling anything. But I'm selling something. I want to write an article about Android apps, but I'm selling my services as an Android app developer. I can't do that on LinkedIn. I still have to guide them back to my website. So let's take one more break. When we come back, we'll talk about a couple of more things we can do in LinkedIn. It's 12.02. Let's take a slightly shorter break. We'll be back at 12.10. So eight minutes. We'll be back at 12.10, and then we'll go on with more LinkedIn.